there's a box. I came here to show you something called a photokite. It's in this box. The box shall be opened. But first, let me tell you what inspired this project, where it comes from. So in 2011, Russian federal elections happened. Uh, there were irregularities. People came out in masses to protest, very unusual for Russia. Unfortunately, mostly ignored by the world media for whatever reasons. Uh, a group of uh, photographers that, for a hobby, they run a website called airpano.com. Very cool, uh, check it out. Uh, usually they take photos, aerial photos, of um, wildlife, of heritage sites. Very beautiful. They came out and to document the, the protests. Um, they just took one or two shots from 20 meters, from 100 meters. Let me show you. The, the resulting shots are, are literally eye-opening. So just from this single image, it's from about 20 meters high, you see just the, the mass of people, the colors, the banners. It's just not possible to consider this event insignificant, uh, visual evidence. And I think in the future, journalism and actually many other professions will see these tools as a requirement, a, as, a, as a given. But there are some fundamental barriers to make this perspective truly accessible. One is training. So that's the vehicle that the Airpano people use. It's a three kilo uh, hexacopter with a three kilo payload, six kilos in the air, quite dangerous, takes a lot of skill, a lot of concentration to operate. Actually, if you take a uh, look at the back of his shirt, it says uh, all questions after landing in English and in Russian. <laughs> People are very curious, they tap you on the shoulder, ah, crash, <laughs> bad. So, so and, and these guys are professionals, they're very good at what they do, they have a lot of experience, but this is a very high barrier of entry to access this unique perspective. Another problem is regulations and privacy concerns. So for many very good reasons, it's very tough to come up with common sense laws to regulate this technology. There's a whole spectrum of vehicles. For example, in the, F in the US, the FAA has actually um, pushed to make these things illegal for commercial use. This is slowly changing, but it's, it's a very complicated situation. But there's another way to access these perspectives. It's with a tether, with a line, with a leash. In fact, if you look at the FAA proposal for uh, integrating UAS, unmanned aerial vehicles, in the US airspace, they say that a tethered vehicle is actually not an unmanned aircraft, which actually makes sense once, once you think about it, because the, the story is different. It's, it's like a kite, so the safety situation is different. You know exactly who is responsible for it. It's just a very different vehicle. But Apart from that, it opens up a whole new way to actually build these things, to interact with them, to use them. And I think at this point, I should just open the box. OK, what do you see? It looks like a quadrocopter. It's actually called a photokite. And I'll show you why it's different in a moment. It's very lightweight, very small. To actually fly it here, I brought a special version which has a bit more protection. <coughs> so again, this is very lightweight, it's protected, feel very safe. The way you use it is you turn it on, you point it in the direction you want to fly, there's a gesture to, to actually interact with it, provided it's on, there we go. So it spins up the motors, and there it goes. And the way this works, there's actually a, a leash, it's a dog leash, the way this works is that the vehicle uh, can figure out where it is relative to me. It's user-centric, user and it maintains the same angle no matter what happens. So if I take a step right, it will actually naturally follow me and maintain the same angle. And this is quite a neat interface. Remember, there is no remote control involved. In fact, I can just go ahead and grab a second one. Again, turn it on. So imagine that you're a journalist, or if you're a scientist, or you're an archaeologist, you can now access this perspective directly without a pilot, without certification. Let me launch a third one, just to make it a bit more interesting. <laughs> FYI, live demos are hard.
One second. So again, I pointed in the direction I want to go. There it goes. And let's stop it right there. Perfect. There's a live feed from each of these. So you can now imagine if you're coming to respond to a breaking news story or you're trying to do science, you're trying to observe animals, you now have this very direct tool that you can actually use yourself to access those perspectives. And my real question to you now is, if you had this, what do you, what do, you do with it? I gave you some examples that I think would change with this tool, and I'd love to hear that. Thank you.